Hello Internet, what's going on? I'm Ricardo, the Cynical Critic, and here we are for the second review for the anime web series, Ruby. The first episode was pretty interesting, despite the fact that it had a bumpy start with generic narration, poor character introduction, and still no idea what the story's gonna be about. This sounded like the show didn't really have a great beginning, but in reality, that's not true. It was a pretty good episode, and that's thanks to the action, the art style, and the world design, which seems to be gearing itself towards a future fantasy world where creatures of shadows exist, guns turn into swords, and our greatest defense against evil is a little girl in a red hood. Hold on guys, two more years and she'll be legal. There's not much I can say about the show so far. First episode merely hinted at some sort of conflict on the horizon, and introduced us to a few characters, including our main protagonist, Ruby Rose. However, the show seems to be also playing the usual anime cards of cliches, having the kid as the main protagonist, making the setting in the school, having a fantasy or sci-fi theme to it, and making most of the cast females. But a cliche is just something that we've seen before, and often with a particular setting or genre. Not unlike our action movies or video games, it is often how a cliche is used that determines whether or not it's good or bad. And does Ruby present itself well enough for us not to notice those cliches? Well. Let's get this review started and find out. Lakana, roll the clip. Yeah, yeah, I've already praised this, so skip. <laughs> Behold the underdog character. Though his beginnings be humble, somehow he shall become greater because of this idiot. You know, not to discourage anybody from going to college. Well, that's not usually how it starts. My life wow. begins. You suck and you'll amount to nothing! Thanks, Mom! You from Vale's got nothing on this. I'm with Yang here. What the hell is that? No wonder why I stopped watching anime. When they have disturbing shit like this, all you can really say is. Fuck. And thus, the Ruby assimilation to the chibi begins. Easy there, little sister. They're just weapons. Just weapons? They're a part of us! Why can't you swoon over your own weapon? Aren't you happy with it? Of course I'm happy with Crescent Rose. I just really like seeing new ones. It's like meeting new people. But better. There's an inferior wiener metaphor to be made here, but I will not make it. I'm currently thinking of it, but I will not make it. Of course you'd think that. I'm average, and there's nothing to be ashamed about. Well, I... Anywho, Yang tells Ruby to cheer up and to make some friends, and then, just like any older sibling would, stitches her to fend for herself as she runs off with her own good friends. We never see them again, but I'm sure they're good friends. I don't know what I'm doing. And then, just like in America, the white man appears out of nowhere to put the red man down. What are you doing? Do you have any idea of the damage you could have caused? Well, it's your stuff. Shouldn't you be watching it? It's not like you have anything volatile in there, like nitroglycerin or insta-boobs. No, she just has dust in there. You know, that stuff from the first episode that was supposed to be like weapons-grade explosives. Yeah, she brought a bunch of that to school, just in case she needs to make a couple of bucks or in case the other girls make fun of her dress. Anyways, White here starts shaking it around, and it ends exactly how you would expect it to end in an anime. And they're both dead. End of show! Thanks for watching, guys! No, of course they don't die, because this is an anime where explosions aren't dangerous, they're funny! I mean, don't you guys remember the Hindenburg? That was hilarious! We're gonna get banned by YouTube for that joke. Aren't we? Well, just as Weiss is about to kill Ruby, Blake from the Black trailer steps in and stops it just like in every anime by spouting a bunch of exposition. She says that the White Trailer Park trash girl is named Weiss Schnee. And apparently, she sold the air to the Schnee Dust Company. You need a tissue? Main supplier of dust and the fantasy equivalent of Walmart, both because of their business practices and the way they treat their workers. And just like anyone else who shops at Walmart, Weiss doesn't like being associated with them and storms off, leaving Ruby with Bla Oh, um, scratch that. Leaving Ruby alone. Ruby doesn't have long to sulk, though, as life decides to kick her while she's down by having the whippy white dude from before be the only person to come and help her up. 
So this pathetic character here explains that his name is jean -Arc. I have a feeling this dude should stay away from that fire chick from before. And just like you usually do with some of you just met, they decide to whip out their things in the customary you show me yours, I'll show you mine. Not surprising, Ruby's is bigger. And this is where we get the famous saying that the Ruby franchise has managed to add to the ever-growing cancerous mass that is memes. It's also a gun. Oh. Thank you, Rooster Teeth. My favorite's from the hound dog himself. Bow chicka bow wow. Bow chicka wow wow indeed. Anywho, we continue to see that this Jean character is, as I said, the pathetic, hopeless, virgin loser of the show who constantly screws up, is given a hand-me-down bread knife as a weapon, and is pitied by everyone who knows him because of how much of a sad failure he is. Right what you know, am I right, Miles? What? And thus, our second episode ends with the usual first day at an anime school cliche of them getting lost. Hey, where are we going? Oh, I don't know. I was following you. And that was the second episode of Ruby, folks. Now to criticize it so you guys can go complain in the comment section. Hold on. What? That's not the end of the episode. What do you mean? Is there like an end credit scene? No, it's just episode three. It's the second part of this episode. What? Yeah, they uh, split this episode into two parts. Why? That's stupid. They needed time to finish working on the show. They could just release it later. I mean, didn't they learn a lesson with not posting two minute episodes like with Red vs. Blue? Hey man, I don't understand it either, but you still got a review to finish. Well, it looks like I'm gonna have to cancel my meetup with Ryan. Hope you can bury a dead body by yourself, man. Whatever, just roll the next clip, Lakanon. Skip! So Ruby and Jean manage to find their way and enter the main hall, looking for Yang- Oh, there she is. Man, that was easy. They're looking for a piss stain in white snow. Ruby goes stands with her sister, leaving poor Jean all by himself. Ah, great. Where am I supposed to find another nice, quirky girl to talk to? The irony god has heard your plight, Jean of the Ark, and has taken pity on your sad-ass life. Here is your waifu. Treasure her while you can. <laughs> Back with Ruby and the foreshadowing aside, it seems that she isn't happy with the first impression she left upon somebody she just met, but is glad that she will never run into Whitey You! God damn enemy cliche! Okay, yeah, it turns out that this is going to be an important character, and they immediately establish her as the royal biatch. Ruby tries to make things up with her because she's kind, naive, and stupid, but Elsa ain't having it. No. Wanna hang out? We could go shopping for school supplies. Yeah, and we can talk about cute boys like tall, blonde, and scraggly over there. Mm -hmm. And thus, a stalker is born. All right. Well, finally, the headmaster of the school, that creepy guy we saw back in episode one, Professor Ospin, gets on stage and welcomes everyone to the school. You plan to dedicate your life to the protection of the people. But I look amongst you, and all I see is wasted energy. By telling them all that they're pieces of garbage and they probably won't succeed. At least they're a hell lot more honest than most schools these days. You can make it! He pretty much just gives them the tough love speech and then walks off, leaving the skinky witch of the east to tell them all that tomorrow the initiation begins. Ready. Oh good, I love joining cults. When do we get to drink the Kool-Aid? He seemed kind of... off. It's almost like he wasn't even there. Wondering what's that all about? Don't worry! They never bring it up again! Interconnected stories are for pussies! I'm a natural blonde, you know. Told you, but he's pathetic and harmless. Eventually night falls and we find our new student sleeping on the floor of the gymnasium. Why, a school that clearly has enough funding to support the freaking cathedral they have can't set some of it aside for temporary dorms is beyond me. They are just like a real school. If this is going to be a slumber party, I'd have mad to see video of the girl's side. It's like a big slumber party. That'll do. Aren't you missing an important part to that activity? God friggin' damn it! Sicko. Hey, Rich, uh, quick question. Are you sure you don't want unimaginable powers in exchange for your body? Yes, because it's too similar to prostitution. Ah, oh, come on, man. I'll give it back to you every Monday and Wednesday. Can we please get back to the review? Uh, fine. Thank you. 
Sorry about that. Anywho, while Yang is chipper and awesome and beautiful as ever, Ruby expresses that she's a bit lonely since none of her friends were able to come to Beacon. Being her sister and therefore determined to embarrass her whenever she can, Yang tries to cheer her up and to help her make some friends by dragging her over to Blake, who Ruby mentioned being earlier. <laughs> I'm sorry, the way Barbara delivers that line is just frickin' awesome. I thank God for Barbara Dunkelman. Incidentally, this is the true birth of the Bumblebee. Please stop acknowledging those creeps and their creepy ideas. Back to the review. Man, I really do get off topic, don't I? Ruby and Yang try talking to Blake in the hope that they'll be friends. They crack some jokes, Yang gives her a compliment. I like your bow. Thanks. I love her cat ears too. But if it wasn't obvious from the book she hasn't put down or barely glanced away from, Blakey Girl isn't in the mood to talk. Yeah, this girl's a lost cause. Hey, don't say that about your boo. You need to support her and understand when she needs some space. Eventually, Ruby does manage to get her to talk by finally remembering that people become a little bit more open when you ask them questions about things they like. What's it about? It's about a man with two souls, each fighting for control over his body. Hell's up with my lighting. Oh, no wonder. Bunch of foreshadowing blocking my ceiling light. I love books. But I don't like sand. Yang used to read me every night before bed. Stories of heroes and monsters. They're one of the reasons I want to be a huntress. I'm very naive and innocent, and judging by the cold dark presence I feel, the irony god will have something to say about that. Being, of course, protagonist, the three girls don't realize that they're talking and goofing off has attracted the anger of the ice bitch. I mean, witch. I mean, no, bitch is correct. What is going on over here? Don't you realize some of us are trying to sleep? Oh, not you again! Uh, two things. First of all, you're walking towards them. You didn't recognize a 16-year-old girl and her big-titted sister? And second? Uh, no one is sleeping with that many lights on. Besides, the gym is full with kids. I'm surprised it's only these three that are talking. Well, these three keep arguing until Blake gets fed up and finally ends the episode. She's only trying to be nice. She's a hazard to my health. No, I wanted to see what happened next. Because if the internet has taught me anything, there was at least a 42% chance of them making out. Ugh. Finally, the episode is over. Right? Yeah, like I said, it was just a two-parter. Good. Well, there you have it, folks. The second slash second to third episode of Ruby. Was it as good or better than the first? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, while this one didn't have any fabulous fights or any mention of the main conflict that we got a hint of in the first episode, we did get a better look at our four main characters. Yes, you heard me right. Four main protagonists. Unlike the usual format of just having one main character with several tagalongs or teammates, as we'll soon learn, the name of the series isn't just a play on words for the main protagonist's name of Ruby Rose, but is also a hint that this tale will be of the four girls we saw in the trailers. The more there are, the merrier I feel. It's true, Ruby Rose is our main protagonist, so she got the first episode to herself, more or less. But here, however, we get a better look at the other characters that we'll be seeing in this series. We see it indeed that Weiss is of high birth, Blake is an introvert who really doesn't talk that much, and Yang is an energetic party girl who's just looking for a good time. Something I could give her if she'd like. I just need to borrow a body first. Richie? No, thank you. Like I said, I've learned not to take deals from you. Damn it! Thinking about an episode that is all talking and no action, you're ready to see more of that. Playing devil's advocate here, we can honestly ask why a show that is geared and advertised itself to having a lot of awesome action has suddenly decided to go all high school drama on us. Moreover, why do they feel the need to break up this episode along with several others into two parters that are only about like five to seven minutes long? Well, while I love playing devil's advocate, I'm going to answer those questions by playing angel's advocate. Rooster Teeth isn't a major production company who has hundreds of millions of dollars just to throw around, nor do they have the state-of-the-art technology to render flawless visuals. For the most part, they are supported by the fans, and despite having money home and an amazing team, this is again their first web series since Red vs. Blue, 10 years prior to Ruby. They've always had to make do with what they had, and when starting this first volume, they really didn't have the kind of funding they needed in order to give us constant fights. To our sad displeasure. At least there's a lot of girls. 
But playing towards their strengths has been Rooster Teeth's key to success, and while a lot of fighting would have been cool to see, it would have also eventually ended with us being bored and tired of the constant battling. They seem to be focusing on the characters and their development, which is definitely their strength, as anybody who has seen Red vs. Blue can attest to. I mean, they took a couple of comedy cliches and made him into some of the most endearing characters I've seen in a long time. And we seem to be getting some character development with our four main girls, though sadly it just seems to be the bare basics for now. We've established that Ruby is your stereotypical young and innocent protagonist, Weiss is your standard rich bitch, Blake is the usual quiet and reclusive chick, and Yang is your average American cowgirl. However, just like in the trailers, there is more going on with these characters than is seemingly shown to us. Yes, Ruby is so innocent that she practically farts rose petals. That they smell great. But remember, she is indeed young. Did I just say that? So we should expect her to be a bit naive. Jeez, I got issues, don't I? Yes, you do. And Weiss does seem like she's just a bitch. In fact, a good deal of Ruby fans have initially expressed displeasure about this. However, what did Blake call her? It's Eris, actually. Yeah, practically a princess, so we should expect her to be a bit snobby. It's something she's probably developed to mentally defend herself in the rich, backstabbing, politically fueled world she's likely grown up in. As for Blake, once again we can't really get a good mark on her because she's presented as the usual cliche character with a shady past. Nevertheless, a cliche is just something we've seen often enough to recognize a pattern and to become accustomed to it. It's how it's used that determines whether or not it's good or bad. For now, we'll just have to wait and see, but again, Blake's voice actor, Aaron Zek, delivers her lines fantastically. Finally, Yang is another cliche as well, but Parva plays her with so much energy and such enthusiasm, I can't get mad about this character. And if they don't develop her over time and instead just leave her as is like they do in most animes, thinking that will suffice, Rooster Teeth has another thing coming! Now that's all I can really say about this since it's just the beginning of the show right now. And while there is still time for it to prove itself, it will be up to Rooster Teeth to show that they are willing to put the characters and story above everything else. Which includes their fans creepy ideas. Well that's it for now guys, thanks for watching. I'm Ricardo, the Cynical Critic. With me, no movie sacred, no video safe, but all this ever chance. Catch you guys next time. Toodles!